What's going on, y'all? Uh, we're on our way from Melbourne, Florida to Inglis, Florida, over to Young's Boats to pick up our repowered, refurbished, and upgraded 1993-2120 Ravala. Inglis? Yeah. Inglis? Yes. Inglis. No, Inglis. Inglis. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is really our decision, our decision process when we were trying to go between um, picking a new boat versus a used boat or a refurbishment of a boat. Um, so first thing is uh, our boat had to be family friendly. Uh, we have a big family, family five. You know, one of the things growing up that I had was was a boat. Matter of fact, we have this boat, the 93 Ravalo that I grew up on. Um, that's really a fond memory that I always had growing up with the family every weekend. Um, just about we were out there either fishing or having some sort of uh, family fun time out of the coal hole um, swimming around or hanging out at the sandbars uh, all the time so that's also something that i wanted to uh, give to my family here and have them grow up on a boat as well so the next thing the next thing we wanted out of a boat is something that was reliable um you know with a family of five and also kind of assuming that we're going to go out offshore, do some fishing or be around, the last thing you want to do uh, is be broke down out on the water uh, with you know, small small kids or family. Um, it's just a hassle. It could be a dangerous situation. So we wanted a boat that was reliable. Um, so right out of the gate, uh, the boat that we had, the the 93 Rivalo, really wasn't, wasn't meeting that requirement. Um, it, it had an old motor on it. It had a, um, a old 2.5 liter, 200, uh, two stroke engine on it. Uh, I had to rebuild it a number of times. Uh, it wasn't that reliable, burned a lot of oil, burned a lot of gas. Um, you know, also in the middle of running, um, we had some hydraulic issues where the hydraulic steering, um, broke and we had to steer it back and by hand. Um, that wasn't a lot of fun. Um, something had to change in that regard. Number three, we're avid fishermen. So we had to have a boat that we could go offshore with, or uh, we could do some inshore fishing with, since you know, you know, we don't always wanna go offshore. We wanna be able to do some things kind of in between inshore, near shore, offshore, kind of have the widest options available to us, kind of where we are in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, and the other thing is, because I have, uh, you know, my wife, she really wants to learn how to captain the boat. She doesn't have quite the same experience I've, I've had in the water with the boat. So um, this is definitely going to be a learning experience for her. And she's going to be learning how to operate a boat, the right rules with um, navigating a boat, docking a boat, trailering a boat, and all that sort of stuff. And we didn't want something that was so big where that was um, more difficult to learn with. That's Greenville. It's right there. See now powering right there. So don't, don't, don't go past it right here at this time. You have reached your destination. Ooh, wait. Is that our boat over there? No, it's our boat. Where did I park? I think we just park uh, like uh, by the office. Yeah, by the office. By the office. And then we'll just wave it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm so pumped. So here is the newly refurbished 2120-1993 Rabalo center console. Um, some of the big things that we had done to it is, uh, number one, we had a really uh, fresh coat of uh, gel coat put on the side here. Um, if you were, probably show you a couple of the pictures of the before, but there used to be a big Rabalo sticker that went down the side and some pinstripes. Um, the other thing they did is uh, filled in a bunch of chips and stuff that were on the pulpit, uh, a lot of cracks and dings, and it uh, looked really bad where this anchor was banging around um, on the pulpit, so clean that up quite a bit. And there was a couple little nicks and dings through the hole, um, you know, just over 30 years of use. Um, the other big addition we had before, the boat didn't have any trim tabs, um, so we added those on there just to um, increase that stability as much as possible. Uh, and the really big update that we had was the engine. It used to have a 2.5 liter um, two-stroke, 200. 
uh, outboard motor and um, had some you know engine problems we had always had to rebuild it always had to clean the carburetors hard to maintain and update so we added this inline four 200 yamaha four stroke on there um, hoping to get uh, a lot of years use out of that guy we added the uh, t-top so it used to be just a center console and we decided we wanted number one a little bit of cover from the sun and also some more rod holder options so when we did that we added the the top box upstairs um, for the VUHF radio um, that gave us a little bit more storage we also added the top um, uh, life preserver bag storage right here that Jen's pointing at um, so it gave us a lot of room so we can empty up our front compartments, but it holds whatever, eight or nine life jackets in there. A uh, really nice design there. Um, it also added five rod holders to the very top up there, so a lot more room uh, up there for our rod storage. Uh, we also added the, uh, yeah, the leaning post. So leaning post added another four rod holders, plus it used to have two bucket seats right here. The bucket seats, um, didn't have a lot of storage underneath, so we added um, the leaning post that gave storage for this uh, compartment right here that has good storage for our tackle boxes and tools and stuff like that that we want to keep in here that Jen's unlung through right now. Yeah, look at all those tools. All right, and then the other thing we added underneath that was a cooler storage. Oh yeah, she's going to pull out the, uh, cutting the cutting board on there. Pretty cool little feature they have on there. Okay, so we're out on the boat, and I thought I'd talk a little bit more about some of the upgrades that we took care of. Um, look at taking a little bit closer look at the center console. Um, uh, one of the things that they did is this used to be like the original center console. Well, this is still a, this still is the original center console of the boat, uh, but there used to be big open holes right here with little uh, holes. Um, that you could kind of put storage and stuff like that in here. Um, so what we had them do is basically glass in all the holes, all the empty holes that were in there and kind of start fresh um, and reinstall all of the switch panel in a more easily accessible place. Uh, ins insert a flush mounted Simrad, which I had before, but went ahead and installed that professionally flush mounted. Installed the Yamaha gauge. That was down there, uh, pretty good, pretty good area there. Um, added a new Ritchie compass um, and then added the fusion uh, radio head um, so we can have a little bit more uh, entertainment. Um, so that was up top. Um, we can see here the Lenco trim tab control added those guys here. Like I said before, the uh, old, old layout did not have any trim tabs. So um, this, that was a great improvement for the boat's performance and being able to um, adjust how it rides uh, in, in different conditions. Um, you know, I can see a huge difference there. Um, we used to have the Mercury throttle here and shifter. Um, it was all mechanical before, and it was all uh, terrible looking, but it was pretty hard and stiff to operate. Um, so they added this nice, came with a Yamaha rigging, um, Yamaha control system here, and then obviously the Yamaha key and kill switch they added there. Um, so all that are big updates that we had to the center console. Really like what they did. It looks a lot more professional, clean, uh, more ergonomic, um, really great design all around.